Guys, um, I'm going to try to come off not as like some whiny YouTuber. I get it, especially like this time of the year where content really dips and slows. That seems to be like a norm. But something that we've done or at least something we've been known for on this channel is actually reviewing things. Just reviewing the sandbox. Reviewing how subclasses have changed season over season. We've reviewed new subclasses. We've made tons of build videos. It's been something we've enjoyed. And even though there were some outliers throughout time, most notably in things like the Taken King or even Forsaken, those outliers didn't really deviate from what I felt like Bungie's sandbox team was trying to achieve. And that's harmony. Harmony amongst all subclasses. Harmony amongst all weapons. And even though it didn't nail it many, many times in different sandboxes, there was obviously archetypes much more powerful than others, subclasses much more powerful than others. But at the time, I could even tell though that it wasn't artificial. These subclasses and these archetypes weren't potent because Bungie just fluffed the numbers up. Bungie was actively trying to achieve achieve harmony, and we're talking like back when Forsaken launched, they were trying to achieve harmony, but outliers occurred. one Eye Mask was an outlier. Nova Warp at launch date was an outlier. Ursa Furiosa inside of PvP with Middle Tree Sentinel, outlier. Shards of Galanor, outlier. But all these things were eventually dealt with, one Eye Mask being the last one dealt with, but this takes us to now, this point, Beyond Light, Stasis subclasses, our first darkness-based subclasses. You either love them or you hate them, or a mix of both, and that, that's kind of where I sit. But more so than anything is that it's apparent to me that Stasis was overtuned and overtuned purposely. Not only were they overtuned, they were overtuned all on their own. No exotics needed to be included to make these subclasses potent. What has bothered me to the point where I almost don't want to review sandbox changes, at least not as enthusiastically as before, is that Bungie Sandbox seems to be getting away from what their goal should be at all times, which is balance, which is hard. Harmony. You see, Stasis is overtuned and purposely so, and so much so simply to sell us on this DLC. But I gotta ask, is it worth the development time to introduce Stasis in this broken state, to introduce these so, so powerful subclasses, to then just send back developers to continue revamping and rebalancing these subclasses. Wouldn't it be better if Harmony was the thing that Bungie was trying to shoot for when issuing new weapons, when issuing any new sandbox? This would make players happier, and on top of that, this would cut down on development time. Those devs that could be focused on new content, new activities, new things, new subclasses, are having to go back and retune things over and over. So the question is, at what point on the manufacturer shipping line of development, who got it wrong? Did it start from the top? Did it come from the executives? Did it come from the leads? Did they come out and say, hey, listen, we need Beyond Light to sell. And the only way to really make it sell is to make these subclasses crazy. I want every new light player inside of Crucible, when they get killed, to be from a stasis subclass. Makes sense? It's the same thing that happened inside of Forsaken. It's the same thing that happened inside of Taken King. I still remember the first time I saw a Shade Step Hunter inside of the Taken King. By the way, this wasn't a thing. This wasn't an ability cooldown like it is now. This was completely new inside of Destiny 1, and I was blown away. I still remember the first time I attacked a Middle Tree Sentinel, and he was blocking with Ursa Furiosa. And I'm trying to gun him down like some idiot to watch the man close the gap, kill me, and then proceed to pop the super yet again in my spawn, not a mere 10 seconds later. Now, I don't know about you guys, it's moments like these that I just go, okay, let me break out the checkbook. American Express, we're buying that expansion. It's the same concept, though, for Stasis. It drives sales to make it super super, super powerful, but there's a tightrope. You see, you lean too far over into crazy land, you lose some of your player base, and maybe a lot of your player base. And that's happened quite a bit over the most recent expansion. Nine times out of 10, I'll be playing Crucible. I'm having a good time. I get frozen though, and frozen, and frozen, and frozen again. And then suddenly I'm like, okay, just gonna play internet chess now. But maybe it didn't start from the top. Maybe it didn't start from the leads. Maybe they just said, hey, make subclasses that are nice, that are good. And they just kind of like handed it off the sandbox to do whatever with it. Well, that concerns me, that concerns me. I know some of the sandbox guys. I like Bungie Sandbox Team. I do. I'm simply just trying to get answers in my head. I'm trying to formulate hypothesis on how something like Stasis even shipped. I'm just trying to get an understanding here. Because if the leads didn't come out and say, hey, listen, we need Stasis subclasses to be potent, then that means Stasis subclasses were made potent based on this ideology of harmony that doesn't exist within Bungie Sandbox Team. I need a guy from Sandbox to look at me and go, yeah, Cross, Stasis is overtuned. And we purposely made it that 
that way for X number of reasons. But if they looked at me and they say, Stasis is good, but I didn't think it was that powerful. I'm worried. I'm concerned because there is no way in hell Stasis under any efficient means of plague testing should have ever shipped. And this is why you do need actual Destiny, hardcore Destiny players play testing your game. You need hardcore players play testing your game. Because if you don't, you don't know the extent of the abilities of which certain weapons or even certain subclasses and abilities can go. Look, there's some out of world shit that I would never even think of off the top of my head. But it takes some crazy nutty players out there to do some off the wall stuff for you to go, oh, okay, well that's kind of broken. Just like here recently, it seems like every map has an out of bounds area. As a normal player, I would never think of this. I would never think of ways to break the map. But see, it takes a player, an actual hardcore player inside a PvP who's always looking for that peak advantage or some other means of advantage to explore the possibilities of breaking your maps. Therefore, who should play test maps? Those type of players. They're the ones that'll be able to tell you if that map is ready to be shipped or not. This seems like a very common sense approach. Everyone's got a means of trial and error and troubleshooting, but you can skip a lot of that if you just got someone with extensive hours of expertise of breaking in the game. If I want to make sure I'm not going to ship something that's going to break next week, I probably have error or cheese forever. Play with it for like a week or something. Boom. Tons of bugs that can be avoided. But the same thing applies. The same exact thing applies to PvP players in Crucible Harmony, as well as PvE players and the Harmony PvE players are trying to achieve. Now, I don't know if necessarily Harmony is what PvE players are trying to achieve. I myself inside of PvE just like things to get crazy. And inside of PvP, I like for those things to be balanced. And if you say for one second that that's not possible, you haven't been looking at Sandbox Patch Notes for two years. Bungie's been tuning things separately now for a very long time. It's on them of whether or not they want to do it. If they do like a blanket nerf or a blanket change, it's because that's what they want to do, not because PvP fuel that blanket nerf and vice versa, PvE to PvP. The point I'm trying to make is I'm tired of seeing so much broken shit. I'm tired of feeling like I'm playing a beta. I'm tired of looking at certain sandbox sweeping changes that doesn't appear appear to be changes that a player would make, a real player. And I know this may be offending someone out there, but there's no way in hell a top tier PvP player would have ever been like, yep, Stasis looks good to me, guys. Let's ship it, baby. Not a chance. And if Bungie really did just make Stasis subclasses just to sell the DLC, which is very likely, then that concerns me on allocation of, of development time. I don't think that's the case though, because if that was the case, the feedback wouldn't be so heavily vested in. Bungie wouldn't be seeking out so much feedback from the community in regards to stasis. Could it just be Bungie putting up smokes? Maybe. But if I was a good dev, I wouldn't know exactly what was broken. I wouldn't need feedback, man. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I overtuned the hell out of stasis. Old Revenant Shatter Dive is pretty busted. Behemoth Super is fairly long. Dude, I would have a patch waiting on ship date for when that day comes. And I would just call up the Destiny Ladder and just be like, hey, listen, guys, we overtuned the piss out of it like you ass. Stasis is gonna be busted. Everyone's gonna die from it. A lot of folks are going to be pissed off, but just so you know, I've got a sandbox patch already waiting. As soon as we hit that point where the community is just about to implode, we can ship it, baby. Let me just let you know, though, we hit that point over 30 days ago. If that patch was ever to roll out, it would have already been rolled out. Even Fallout tested things on Shatter Knife. It was the smallest nerf in the history of nerfs. Regardless, though, all this really boils down to is I'm having a difficult time going in circles when I don't know where the problem is originating from. Ideally, I want a balanced sandbox. I think it is possible to have a sandbox in which many multiple archetypes of weapon are powerful, as well as all subclasses having a number of pros and cons. Hence, some subclasses having very good neutral game while also simultaneously having a mediocre super and vice versa. A really, really good super, but mediocre neutral game. And then some things just changes depending on the game mode. I had a big issue when like a year, what was it, a year and a half ago, when it was someone at Bungie, I can't even remember off the top of my head, but the comment was essentially, every season will introduce a new meta where certain weapons will rotate in and out of the meta to keep things fresh. I don't like that because that immediately tells me right there that harmony is not the goal. The goal is actually Bungie creating outliers. The problem is it takes a really good, good player, both for PvE and PvP. It takes a player that can break your game, that can literally bend it over and cheese it to hell and back for you to know the extent of the outlier that you're introducing. And my problem is, is I don't feel like those players are working at Bungie. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.